switch. Is that any bigger? Mm -hmm. Alright. Alright, let's wait on that and then we'll, we'll get to Instagram here in a bit. Cool? Alright. Sweet. Alright. Alright. Hello, Houston. Hello, everyone. Hello, the world. Welcome to the Wonky Power Live Sessions. And tonight we have a very special guest, John Allen Stevens, everyone. Yes. <laughs> Been doing amazing work. And um, John Allen Stevens, just a quick bio here. Uh, John Allen Stevens is an artist, producer, and multi-instrumentalist from Houston, Texas, blending elements of pop, R&B, and electronic music. And uh, he's done a lot of great things here in the city of Houston, production-wise, and he is now releasing a brand new album for us, and he is now here in the studio with us. Thank you so much for being here, John. And Thank you guys for having us, man. Yeah, for sure, man. Uh, I want to also thank everybody that's watching from home and outside our exclusive audience right now. We have a limited audience. Thank you all so much for being a part of this. This is a brand new uh, live music, virtual music concert series that we're starting off, and we, we're so happy for you all to be here. And um, I couldn't say thank you enough. Thank you so much. And... Um, uh, I want to also thank uh, Equal Parts Brewing for helping us with uh, some nice tasty beers. Luis, your, your buddies at Equal Parts Brewing helped us out with some of the beer, right? Nice. Nice, yeah. So get yourself some Equal Parts Brewing. We have some at the bar. And uh, I also want to thank Axelrad. They're currently showing the entire live stream, so people out there are watching as well. So everybody watching at Axelrad, thank you all so much. We hope you enjoy the show. And uh, John... Before we begin, I just want to say thank you so much for being a part of this. We've known each other for many, many years, yeah, and man. Uh, it's so good to have you good and Danny that. as well. Yeah, man. So glad to see you, and uh, I'm so proud of you and everything that you've accomplished, you, and um, just want to say thank you again. And we have a very good friend here, David Garrick, with Close Caption, and he's going to do the interview segment, and uh, I'm going to let him do his thing. Thanks so much. You know, if you're watching at home or you're watching at Axelrad or you're outside watching, thanks so much for being here. You are in for a treat. We all know that John just released a record called Return to Form. John, you ready to give us some of that good good? I think so. All right, let's do it. Thanks for coming. All right. Let's see. Johnny, can you hear me? Is that you out there? Are you with somebody else? Cause I don't know if I could take it And I can feel you near me Swaying there to the beat Singing me a lullaby Still I can't get no relief So where is my Sylvia on Sycamore Springs Born nine days late February 88 I threw the flaming flask Molotov, no cracks Just spinning, lying there As flames spread to the grass Brought out the bond of it Bound for better weather I never made it And every day I see the scars And feel the grief of the blow I took the pills Killed whatever pain Remained and sat dazed Burying all the trouble that way Until the trouble at bay Found its way out the grave Haunted me just like a phantom That was hungry and rage But who am I? Something to say, baby. What you want? Cause we got options. Come around here, we do this often. You already know that I'm a problem. 
Or if you like, I can take you back before the breakdown. They got me face down. Before the felony, before I poured the gasoline, the BMW was never on a leash. Your parents tossed the car and brought the keys back before we took the ride. Before your taillights faded in the night. Before I took the rag and struck the light. All right. Heaven knows I was on one. Okay, no, I was on five, so I lied. We swerving in the lane. Bottle in my lap. Black band and around my face, I had it wrapped. I was stepping out the car and then I couldn't take it back. So I threw the cocktail at the middle of the pad door. But I got no idea what gave me that bad. That I was so kind of hard body to fill the names If they're asking questions, I got nothing to tell But I got something to say Give you what you want, cause we got options Come around here, we do this often You already know that I'm a problem You already know why you acting like you know everything And you go acting like you know everything Living like you've been met your last rights Even in my past life, I was in that fast lane I can't seem to act right, you know that it's my sight There ain't nothing you could tell me I'm not buying what you're selling And if you take it there, there ain't no telling And if you take it there, there ain't no telling I can't get them all talk to crack Flames slowly spreading through the grass Like that and I can never take it back Honestly, I got no idea what gave me that idea Then I was so kind of hard body, tough for the nails If they're asking questions, I got nothing to tell But I got something to share Baby, what you want, cause we got options Come around here, we do this often You already know that I'm a problem You already know So my mind, you know what's on my mind, you know it, baby. Thank you guys so much for having us. Well, how could I forget? I see the whole thing. You hand me the brush, I paint the whole scene. I'm in the middle of the street, I'm lying broken. But let me just rewind. Because it took me 12 years just to give up the high. And then it took another one to come to terms with the lies. I remember when I shut my eyes on the drive and I was there. so much. Okay. 
Open my new myself, but my talent is God gifted. This is that truth that lived in. I remember back when I was calling in prescriptions. Would take two, then two more just to stop the withdrawal. And with all of that, slowly came all of this. A vision of slit wrist, the tug of a vein split. But that day never came, and I can't truly say whether or not there is redemption. But I woke up to the light through the pain. To prayer, glory to God, whatever name, you can call it what you may, but it's at a feet I lay, as I place down this humble offering, a lyric and a song to sing, but it's not No, no, no. 
Thank you. I got you. Questions, can you kind of tell us who all these amazing artists are playing with you tonight? I heard a couple of them get mentioned, but. Yeah, so we have Leo Rayon on saxophone, Hayden Hamilton on the drums. They both played uh, on a few songs on the album. Leo plays on almost like every song, I think. Uh, Danny, my wife, Daniela Hernandez is here. She's going to be playing bass in a little bit. Uh, that's the whole crew. Cool. It sounds amazing. The new songs are really working, so whatever you're doing, <laughs> keep doing it. Thank you, man. Uh, recently, Joey Guerra of the Houston Chronicle said that through the music you've produced, you've shaped the sound of Houston music. Do you have a hard time taking off the producer cap and putting on the artist cap, or do they kind of go hand in hand for you? I think that's a good question. I think um, at best, they work together, you know what I mean? I think I'm informed a lot by the different projects I work on and try to take something. I think there's something to learn from every project. So hopefully the best of my stuff informs client stuff and, and vice versa, yeah. Well, that makes sense. I mean, I kind of see you more like a modern day Jeff Lynn. If you don't know who Jeff Lynn is, we're talking about- I'll take it. He was in the Traveling Wilburys. He produced some of Tom Petty's best work. He was in Electric Light Orchestra. He that George Harrison record. George uh, Harrison record. He also came up with good songs on one of the worst movies ever made, Xanadu. <laughs> um, but just a hell of a producer, and I liken you to him because you know how to heavily arrange a song, have a lot of moving parts, but it doesn't sound overproduced. How do you go about writing songs and putting these tracks together? Well, for this new album, uh, I had the roots of these ideas for, for some time. Uh, I kind of kept them, I think, at their kind of raw power for what I was able to contribute. And then just having guys like this come in kind of transformed this, the material, you know? So for the new stuff, it was a lot of collaboration, um, mostly improvisation. Uh, and you can hear from the way that they play, like you give these guys a couple of takes and that's really all you need. So tried to do less is more kind of a thing, you know? Yeah. But there's definitely a lot uh, there. But yeah, hopefully there's something to be said for it not being uh, too busy or whatever. No, it's not. Not at all. I mean, I think the best players only need a couple takes. We were talking about that earlier. Yeah. Um, that definitely is part of the way that it sounds, though, you know, and that probably gives it a little bit more of that raw element because some of the other stuff, the beats and stuff, are pretty heavily produced, but there's really very organic elements in there, too, yeah. While the songs fit together on the first album, it was a lot more varying of a sound. This one feels a lot more focused, maybe a little even more R&B driven. Yep. Was that on purpose to kind of, this is what I'm going to do and this is what it is? I think so. I think with uh, Radio Club, that's more like a mixtape almost. Um, the idea was to kind of do like a tour of pop music and, and do a lot of different styles. And so there's a lot represented there from like more modern stuff to more kind of vintage tinged like synth pop stuff. This was definitely more deliberate and wanting there to be like a full sonic kind of something cohesive for the full project. For sure. Um, you know, theological scholars maintain that a person is never truly known. But if you had to be known for something, would you ever be known as a producer or an artist or both? Um, I guess I, I don't... I, both, you know, because I, I think that the work that I'm doing as an artist definitely informs what, I'm do, what I do with production and, and vice versa. I mean, these songs are very immaculate. Is it tough to say, okay, this song is done without continuously tweaking it? Because it's something you and I know have discussed in yeah, the yeah, past. Yeah. Even people like Kanye West will just continually mess with the song. Mm -hmm. Is that hard to say, okay, it's done? It is, man. I think for me it helps to have someone else master this stuff. I do everything else basically except for mastering. Um, and getting that final seal of approval where yeah. someone else worked on it and um, – giving you that thumbs up, definitely, uh, that's what kind of finishes it for me. I, I always get a, a sense of when I'm done because I just, I don't know if what I'm doing is making it better or worse anymore, you know? So that's when I know like, okay, it's never like it's finished. It's just like, I don't, I, I can't contribute anymore, you know, or I don't know whether it's improving or not. That's when I'm like, all right, it's done. That's probably a good marker to have for it. Um, I mean, your vocal range is, unbelievably varied it seems like you can almost hit a falsetto on cue have you always known you could do that or is that something that came along more recently 
I think that developed. It's definitely not something I was always comfortable doing. I think I'm just, it's funny because I feel like I'm just now starting to really develop my voice as a, an artist. Um, but yeah, definitely something that came over time. Being able to, maybe I could hit the notes before but wasn't as comfortable doing it and doing it more, uh, focusing more on this style of music too uh, lent itself well to those kinds of things that I wasn't really doing before. Yeah, it makes sense. I mean, the record Out the Gate did great on streams. Today was Bandcamp Friday. I know you released art prints, shirts. Yeah, we have some merch cassettes. here tonight as well. Yeah, they're all here tonight. Is that it on formats, or do you have anything else planned in the future? Uh, I'm working f on vinyl. I'm kind of, uh, if you hear this out there, if you want to uh, pitch in for merch tonight, it will go to more um, Return to Form uh, there's hopefully going to be a deluxe uh, vinyl with a couple extra songs in there. So that's definitely the next, the next move. That's cool. Yeah. So the live set is such a refreshing burst of energy. You cover a lot of bases with ease. Tonight you had a mix of playing with others and doing some of the heavy lifting on your own. What made you decide to bring in other musicians for this project? Well, for live, it just to me, it wouldn't have made any sense to just try to do it on my own just because what they contributed kind of so radically transformed the project. Um, but just in making this project, I was, uh, when I was kind of getting my personal life together a couple of years ago, jazz was something I really only discovered in the last couple of years. And uh, I knew I wanted to try to push myself sonically and... Um, I can't play sax. <laughs> I don't play drums like Hayden. So have uh, it was actually a friend of mine who I used to teach audio to who hooked me up with these guys. Um, and then we, I just tried to kind of make friends and stay connected. And they were, um, I was fortunate enough to have them come in on a few, few more of the songs than just one. So it kind of shaped the project like that. That's cool. I mean, I think jazz is something we all come into on our own. I was 35 before I could even wrap my head around jazz. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And it all came from a documentary I saw and, that's you how know. it started for me, too, is actually a, a, a Coltrane documentary called Chasing Train. I, like, really identified with his story, and then that's what actually made me, like, dig into the music. Same. Thing. Mine was Coltrane as well, but it was a BBC doc, and he was talking about playing around the root. And for the first time in my life, I was like, oh, I get it. <laughs> like, it, it all makes sense now. He's doing the opposite of what we're all trained to do right. as artists. Uh, but speaking of coming to things on our own, you ready to play a little more? I'm good. Awesome. Thanks so much for coming. Of course, man. Thank you guys for having me.
is here. Got it. Purpose, asking God if I could be of service Told me that I'd only touch the surface Go deep, tell them all about it When you couldn't sleep, you were sweating through the sheets I remember when you couldn't eat Baby boy, you were wild like a lion off the leash But you can't, but you can't keep A bird in a cage You can tell me things, baby, Ooh. I was on one, I don't think I'm fine Body aching all the time, baby ooh, ooh, ooh. But this is just a demo Baby, are you mental? All I 
need is you an instrumental Four chords, one microphone And I could drive it home One headlight Trouble my type What if one song could save a life? Angel overhead, you see the light She's the only reason I'm alive The motorcycle crash with the divine Chose to give me one more night And now I know why Ooh, yeah. Thank you. We got one more from the new record for y'all. Just give me one second, it's not gonna work. I'm just waiting for Mario. Oh yeah, are we good? Uh, yeah, 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 we're good, we're Perfect. good. I just wanna make sure that that was the quality coming up right here. Gotcha.
Thank you. Thank you so much, Leo and Hayden, Daniela, for joining me tonight. I'm going to play these last few uh, from Radio Club. Thank you, guys, man. Amazing, amazing, dude. I think he's, uh... How's everybody doing out there? Hope you all are having a good time. <laughs> all right. <laughs> you can hear him on the headphones, huh? <laughs> Nice. Anybody out there? I love y'all. Seriously, thank you so much for um, supporting live music during this time. I know this is a little bit of an experiment, but we really appreciate it. Absolutely. Uh, and anybody outside or anybody watching right now, you can uh, go to our website, wonkypower.com, and watch the live stream. And you can join the chat. There's a chat. And if you have any questions, you can write them in there. And we, we can see the, the questions. And we can ask John so he can answer. <laughs> Dude, uh, that was incredible, man. Oh, thank you. Um, I think, uh, David, did you want to do a few more questions, or uh, did you want to wait for, yeah, we can do that. for the crowd? Yeah, we can do that. Can I ask a few more questions? Is that cool with you, John? Yeah, of course. Sweet, man. You know, the new record, the artwork is just beautiful, and I know you went with similar art uh, for the singles. Who yep. contributed the artwork, and how did you come into presence with them? Uh, all that is Cassie Skelly, who is a Houstonian. Yeah, big round of applause. Um, Cassie was doing these beautiful paintings using this certain type of ink on a certain type of paper. It was super fluid, and it felt um, very emotionally... Uh, like, I had a definite emotional response when I was seeing the stuff, and I thought it would just fit well. And so I just sent her a bunch of the earliest demos, and she came back with that, like... Uh, basically all of those are from like one day I think maybe there was one other painting that we added but almost all those come from like a single session of hers just kind of putting it all together and that's her response to the music yeah yeah that is really cool it's kind of yeah it's the coolest I mean it's it's the best I've felt about pairing art with my music before like for sure this album is super personal for you Without getting too deep into it, can you kind of explain the concept behind it all? Yeah, so um, I've just had a kind of wild, uh, a wild life. And since maybe I was 20 or so, I, I had gotten really badly into uh, prescription drugs a couple, several years ago. And I had a motorcycle accident. I had my best friend uh, passed away from an overdose. And so all those things kind of had accumulated in my life to I was just kind of stuck in this pattern um and it was really my family Danny and my uh my best friends who kind of helped get me out of that place but the music um I wanted to kind of embody the growth out of that kind of cyclical behavior and I had been trapped in that kind of uh you know cycle of behavior for years and so kind of to finally be on the other side of it and to feel comfortable sharing that stuff for me felt profound and and um hopefully people get something out of it you know what i mean yeah it's definitely cathartic to excise demons no matter where they lie uh the live set has always really i mean i don't see that many artists that are that into what they're doing and what i mean by that is it seems like you are just into every beat every note you're feeling everything has it always kind of been that way for you I do love performing live. Um, I think my first band ever was a was a blues band when I was in like high school, and we did a lot of improvisation improvisation in that band. So that's kind of always been something I've wanted to do more, and I think I'm just having the most fun now being able to really execute some of that stuff, and to have the friends and players who are um, down to kind of accompany me. Um, but definitely performing live is something that I love to do for sure. This is this is a unique challenge, um, but it's something that I feel really strongly about, and I'm so stoked that people showed up and that we can continue to support live music in like any way. So this is exciting. Yeah. We got a question here from our YouTube chat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. From Ben Bao one two three. So since jazz was a big inspiration for your album, what are your favorite jazz artists or favorite jazz song yeah man uh for me i started with the really seminal stuff like a love supreme uh giant steps um 
ballads, uh, all those are Coltrane albums. I would start there. I feel like a lot of people associate him with maybe the f- more avant-garde stuff that he did later, or they, or they think of Coltrane and they think of like this noisy kind of nasally tone. But he has some such beautiful music uh, with Miles Davis, and then also just his solo stuff. But for me, that was what really got me into jazz was Coltrane. Uh, definitely a love supreme and giant steps though. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah, I. You know, Coltrane and uh, Thelonious Monk, you know, gr- being older, when I would hear jazz, it would sound like I would confuse it with big band music and there's some white guy and it's like, what is this? <laughs> and then uh, through various friends handing me records over the years, I mean, as a guy that writes about music, if I really want a record, I can email somebody and they'll mail it to me. Right. But the records I buy the most of now are super rare jazz pressings. Um, is there some factor of jazz? You, like right now for me, I'm super into free jazz, yep. the side of jazz that people seem to say is pointless, and I love it because <laughs> it's so free and free of just the expressions in it are amazing. Free jazz. Um, is there a, a genre, a subgenre of jazz that you want to get into later on or that you're Honestly, already into? Honestly, man, I'm still very much exploring that part of uh, music, and, and it's something I still feel pretty new to. Um, but yeah, absolutely, I mean, uh, the more stuff that I listen to, the more I kind of dig in. Like Bossa Nova recently has a lot of uh, jazz elements with the the chords that they're playing, but it's like a slightly different version or something maybe smoother or more uh, relaxing. But there's so many different uh, yeah styles and subgenres. Um, I'm I would I'm looking forward to to getting into more of it. You know what I mean? Uh, another question here on yeah, you YouTube it. chat. From Elizabeth Rhodes, has your musical practice changed through the quarantine? Hey, Elizabeth, um, has it changed? You know what, man? Uh, this last year, I kind of felt like I lost that year. Just I, I was sitting on a lot of music, but I um, it didn't feel like the right time in in so many different ways. But I just I think now I'm I'm. Um, appreciating how quickly time moves on Mm -hmm. and so I try to just stay in the studio you know Mm -hmm. like every day I am in the studio if anything I think I've become more kind of laser focused on just as time goes on as I get older I just want to put out more music and I think for some time I've been producing a lot but not necessarily releasing so much Mm -hmm. so if anything um man just trying to stay even more productive more creative and then just want to put out more music very cool. Man. Before we get into this last song, I want to ask, obviously, streaming has changed the music industry, and this is not a knock at any format, but I would guess if you want people to experience your music, they would go to Bandcamp, correct? Bandcamp is great, man. Um, Bandcamp today is Bandcamp Friday, so they're waiving all the their kind of fees, and, and artists get to keep more of the takes, so by all means, if you're, if you're not here tonight, feel free to stream the album on Bandcamp. As much as you want, and then also, yeah, there's uh, cassettes on there, T-shirts, um, even some some kind of previous merch from Radio Club and stuff like that. But yeah, Bandcamp's great. We have uh, another question here. Uh, go for it. We'll go over the last one here, unless somebody else uh, chimes in. Uh, last one from Antonio Eyes. What inspires you to keep going? Man, it's um, a good question, dude. That's a, that's uh, a heavy one. No, it is <laughs> because music can be can feel really defeating at times like even just earlier I had an issue on one of the songs and and I know in my mm. that that wasn't how I, it was planned and yeah. so there's so many setbacks it's so easy to get discouraged yeah man I think man I just love fucking music you yeah know? so at the end of the day it's not even necessarily about releasing it or sharing it with people that part's like the cherry on top but I just I got to do it, you yeah, know, to like stay part, sane. So yeah. part of it is definitely just out of necessity for here and, and here, you know what I mean? Yeah, necessity. <laughs> so I think overall, I, I completely agree with you. Necessity is kind of like in our blood to to be creative and more. And I mu- just don't feel mm-hmm. right when I'm not doing it. You know, yeah. that's how I know I need to. That's a really good question. But that's how I know I need to stay being creative is because when I'm not doing that is when I'm not. I don't feel like yeah. myself. You know yeah, what I mean? dude, that's. Yeah, I completely agree with you, man. That's amazing. Uh, yeah, thank you all so much for going on the YouTube chat, and thank yeah, you everybody thank you for, guys, for real. asking awesome. a few questions. questions. Thank you all so much. So um, we're gonna we're yeah. gonna hear three songs off of uh, the first record, correct? We're gonna do some Radio Club. Yeah, this cool. is for uh, 
yeah, all the day ones and, and people who have kind of been with me for a while. I'm going to play a couple off of Radio Club. Thank you, guys. Cool. Dude, Let's get you, into John. it. Thanks so much.
guys so much. I got one more for y'all. This one's slept on. It's one of my favorites. And we're 
all on the same team I've been on the same side Call me on the same line Knowing nothing's changed But the shine of the bed that we slept on Thank you guys so much. Amazing, dude. Yeah, it sounds great. <laughs> it's incredible, dude. So, John, before we get into this last song, I know the song is a cover, uh, and covers are usually personal, is why somebody chooses one. Can you explain what made you choose this song? Man, uh, I'm just kind of getting into Blaze Foley. This next song is by an artist named Blaze Foley. He's kind of a Texas songwriting legend. Um, he died at a young age, and his, his, he was never really appreciated in his time. Um, it was kind of the other bigger names covering his songs that gave him um, some life after he passed. And I think I was just fascinated like by the story, and then his songs are just so good. So th this next song um, is called Clay Pigeons. It's a cover by Blaze Foley. Nice, Let's man. This guitar into Love the artist, dude. Uh Got one more from YouTube, Lenny, yeah, go man. For it, man. One more. Uh, I like this one. What's your favorite favorite piece of gear that you own? Your Ooh, favorite piece of gear that you own? Now you're speaking my language. Yeah, we're, man. We're going to be here all night. This is a f <laughs> uh, question from Glaze the Band. Oh, Glaze. Oh, Glaze. Yeah, yeah, What's yeah, up, Glaze. homies? What's up, y'all? Um, Thanks for watching. Man, the thing that's probably changed my game the most is is the Profit. Um, the 08 was the first synthesizer I ever bought. I had no fucking idea what I was doing um, but it's so hands on that you just turn one knob and you kind of learn that knob's function so probably the profits man that's probably uh, the six now that I have it but uh, analog nice. synthesizers man there's just something something to it something that. really great about the analog synthesizer especially the profits man I think I think you have something from Dave right here right what, what do you have right here? Yeah, so both of these, this is a Sequential Profit 6, sequential and then profit. this is a Dave Smith Instruments, which, which is the same guy. Yeah. Same designer, uh, Profit 08. Dude, amazing. It sounds great, too, man. Jeez, you yeah, don't have to right? do much awesome. to make it sound incredible. Uh, <laughs> oh, man, there's another one coming in here. Go for it, man. Is that a 60s Strat, and how do you like it? So, I don't own a guitar that costs more than $500, but <laughs> this is a... Hey, uh, everyone, listen to that. That's a really <laughs> great piece of advice. Say that again. <laughs> yeah, man. So, to me, like, I used to have a $2,500 uh, 72 Custom. Um, it was like a one of those really nice Fender Custom shops. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It just didn't sound like five times the instrument, you know? Yeah. So, like, this is just a Mexican standard. Yeah. And to me, the, the Mexican Fender stuff... Uh, just plays better out of the box i think yeah, mm -hmm. sometimes you think you spend that much more money it's going to come set up it's going to mm -hmm. play perfectly but you still got to work at it and yeah. these i just feel like both of the i have a telly and i have a strat they're both uh s standard uh mexican fenders and they just played great when i got them so nice man yeah. well there 500 you go. guitar man 500 dollar guitar everyone. you don't <laughs> gotta get a 2500 dollar guitar or anything like that there's a guy that has a lot of vintage gear i can say it has not made me a better player so <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> There you go, man. Uh, uh, I was going to say real quick, please. Well, one, thanks for everybody for coming. Thanks for watching. Thanks for being here on site. If you're going to buy his record, if you're on site, get a copy. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. If you're watching at home Absolutely. or somewhere else, go to Bandcamp, pick up a record so mm -hmm. he gets that royalty free today. Do that today. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Today. It's Friday. It's Jeez. Friday. Dude. Ends at midnight. Yeah, I think it so. does. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, you can go to his website, and also the link is on our website too for John Allen Stevens. So it's already there. Just click on his photo, and it takes you directly. It's ready to go. It's ready to roll, man. Get that gear, or get it here if you're here. And by the way, everybody that's outside, give yourselves a hand of applause, please, please. Yeah, because seriously. You guys thank are you guys for being here, man. Thank you all so much, really. And uh, everybody watching again, thank you all so much for supporting this uh, entirely new concept of virtual concerts uh we're trying our best here and um you know we're learning as we go so we really appreciate you being here and i want to say thank you to you guys um because yeah, i hadn't felt comfortable with the idea and playing a set since the pandemic started this is the first time that someone came to me with the approach of how do we do this and do it 
safely for everyone. And I know this is a little bit different. Mm -hmm. So you guys out there, seriously, thank you so much for coming. I know there's this uh, sh small gap between us, mm -hmm. but it really means a lot. And I can hear you between the songs. And um, this is such a crucial time for live music, man, because culture dies too, you know? And yeah, if we absolutely. don't prioritize um, staples in our community, uh, I think... I'm afraid they will go away. So this was super exciting for me, and thank you guys here yeah, for putting this all together. No, and, dude, and John, it. thank you so much for being a part of it. And I want to also thank David for bringing the entire idea. I over hear you us. guys out there. Thank y'all. Yes. I'm about yes. to come out there in a second. <laughs> we got the merch. Yeah, I'll play this for last sure. song. This one's a cover. Dude, I love take it song. away, man. Thank you so much again, John. Uh, we'll say goodbye after this song. Thank you. guys so much my name is john allen stevens truly i appreciate y'all i'll be right out at the merch booth in just a few minutes thank you guys so much wonky power close cap love you guys thank y'all so much dude we love you man thank you so much thanks for coming out if you're watching on youtube please don't forget to subscribe and like that helps us out a lot uh you can get tickets for all these shows if you live in houston at wonkypower.com you know if you're doing something like you want to do something like this, they can completely accommodate you if you go to the wonkypower.com website. There's more about live streams. That can be anything from a concert to a wedding or even a birth announcement. 
that can kind of handle all your needs. Or if you just want to make a really great record, there's a studio inside as well. Thanks so much for watching. Thanks so much for coming. Have a great evening. Thank you so much, David. Well, I want to give a round of applause to David Garrick with closed caption for being here as well. Thank you so much, man. Thanks. Appreciate you, brother. Yeah. Everybody, again, thank you all so much for being here and being part of the limited audience. And also want to thank everybody watching at Axelrad, the Axelrad family. Thank you all so much for tuning in, enjoying the show. And, you know, we're going to continue doing these. And just want to also thank the entire team, Luis, Memo, Alex, Jonathan, Robert, everybody that's a part of Gus, everybody that's a part of the entire live sessions, making this work, making this possible. This is an entirely new thing that we're trying to bring to the city of Houston. So thank you so much. Please subscribe to our YouTube. Just go to our website, wonkypower.com. And if you'd like to donate to the artists, just go to our website. There's a button there. You could donate everything. All the donations go to the artist tonight. So please go on there or go to his band camp and check it all out. Thank you all so much. We love you. Have a very nice night. Hang out. We'll have some music. We're going to play some more uh, live sessions from, from the past. Thank you all so much. Enjoy yourselves.